Good morning, church. Happy Sunday. I'm so glad you're here with me today. Um, my name is Esther and I'll be leading us in a time of worship. So I just invite you guys to step into this time with me um, and let's worship God together.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this beautiful Sunday morning where we can just sit down and worship you, Lord. I pray that we may open up our hearts and our minds to listen and receive your word that you have for us today. Um, I pray for Brother John that you may just use him to really convey the message um, that you have for us this morning, Lord. And, and I also pray for us as a church. Um, while we may not be able to get together as one body to worship you, Lord, I pray that we, we may just use this time to unite us as one um, until the time comes where we may come together again, Lord. Um, I thank you for everything that you've done and continue to do for us, Lord. And I pray that you continue to lead us and guide us from this place. Um, I pray that this week we may find the time to just intentionally spend time with you, Lord, um, especially during these very um, just 
difficult times that we're in, Lord. Um, where we're going through um, pandemic fatigue and just really missing being with each other, Lord. And yeah, I pray for another great week. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. John chapter 14, verse 8. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Verse 16, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Verse 23, Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All of this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all the things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Sisters and brothers, today I want to talk to you about nature of God. Through the passage um, Brother Sean uh, read for us, uh, John chapter 14, verses 8 through 11 and 16 through 20 and 23 through 26. Uh, especially, I want to focus on uh, what we call Holy Trinity, right? Holy Trinity. You probably have heard of that term before, right? Holy Trinity. Um, God uh, in three beings, right? Three essence or you know basically three in one right three gods in one but one god uh, you know in three essence or three nature there, there's so many different way to describe you know but we have God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit right so three beings as a one God but it is one God it's not three parts of God and Holy Trinity is something what we call paradoxical understanding of God in other words we don't understand it because we see three as three separate and yet right in God it's one right how can one be three and three in one right it's not like you know uh, some uses this three phases of water like you know the water can be uh, solid or liquid and gas and but that's still it's kind of changing it's morphing right one becoming uh, becoming another but in the Bible it's very clear that no God does not operate in that uh, sense that he's not morphing himself he's not changing himself he is still one God and yet we see him as a three uh, distinct being Okay, that's the only th way that I can really explain it. I'm not really smart enough to, um, you know, uh, to discuss this theological understanding of a Holy Trinity. But what I want to do is I want to focus on John chapter 14 and how Jesus explained the Holy Trinity, not as a, like a theological understanding, but more relational. Okay? That's really what I want to focus on today. Okay, So what is Holy Trinity? What do we understand that? 
The first thing that I want to understand is I want to focus on God the Father. Who is God the Father? We see that from the very beginning, right? In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth, right? And we see God speaking, right? When God spoke, He created all these things, right? In fact, we see that only human beings, right, in chapter 2 right, of Genesis, that God actually forms with His own hand. Everything else, right, the whole universe, right, He created with His Word. Okay, so we know God the Creator is the God the Father, right? And God the Father, all throughout the Bible, we see Him is the one who sits on the throne, uh, the one who rules, right? One who judges, right? We see that all throughout the Bible, right? God is the God Almighty, and He is the one who judges everything, and He's the one who rules everything. So I want you to understand that. But then, when Jesus came to us, right, he called himself as son of God, right? And yet, he has a very intimate relationship with God. He speaks to God, he prays to God, but at the same time, he always says, I and Father are one, right? Father is in me and I in him. So there is this very intimate, very, uh, you know, close relationship between God the Father and God the Son. And in fact, when we read John chapter 1, right, uh, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was uh, with God, and the Word was God. And that Word became a being, a human being, right, to dwell among us. So we, if we go back to the Genesis chapter 1, we see, right, when God spoke, right, the word that He spoke came to be, right? So we see that God the Father and God the Son, right, has a very close relationship. That it was a God the Father who initiated, who started the act of creation, but it was the Son of God who is the Word, God's Word embodied, executed the will of God, right? And throughout, right, His ministry, Jesus never put Himself above the Father, right? He always, like even when He was feeding, you know, uh, 5,000 men, Right, five loaves of bread and two fish, right? He gave thanks to God. He gave thanks to the Father, right? And he praised God, right? Oh, thank you for, right, uh, listening to my prayer. So there's this very intimate kind of dynamic relationship between God the Father and God the Son. Now, Philip came to Jesus and says, well, show us the Father. We want to see God, right? Like Moses did, like Abraham did. We want to see God. We want to experience God. That's the kind of thing that we also ask God, right? We want to experience the power of God in our lives. That's what Philip wanted. And Jesus kind of looked at him and said, are you kidding me, right? Don't you see me? When you see me, right, you see God. And that's very powerful, isn't it? Right? See, if Jesus did, did not come to us, right, He did not come to us as a human being, it would be very difficult for us to relate to God, God the Creator and God the, you know, the Sustainer, right? But because Jesus came to us, became one of us, and not only that, because He died for us, now we have a connection with God. And this is the kind of connection, right, no other, right, no other can have. Only Christians, only believers of Jesus Christ can truly experience this connection because God became one of us, right? We call it God incarnate. 100% God, 100% human. But that was not all, right? As Jesus explained that 
he and, and the Father are one, right? He also says, I'll send you the Spirit. I'll send you the Helper, he says. Helper with the big H, okay? He says, I'll send you the Helper. And he will be with you. He will explain to you. And he will guide you. He will help you. He will comfort you. That is the God, the Holy Spirit, right? See, this is, this is the part of God. I don't want to use the word part, but this is the being of God that was from the beginning, right? It's not like he was separate being. No, you see that, right? In Gen uh, Genesis chapter 1, uh, verse 2, in fact, right? I'll read verse 1 and verse 2. It says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep and the spirit of god was hovering over face of the waters so holy spirit was hovering the hovering in this term and uh, in in hebrew it's kind of means brooding it's like a you know the mother bird you know kind of like a brooding over her young in the nest that's the image right holy spirit is kind of like a you know uh, like brooding like a taking care of it you know kind of like uh, like the mother bird right taking care of her young so we see that from the very beginning of creation God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit was together. And in fact, when He created us, right? What did He say? He says, let us make a man in our image, male and female, right? He created them. This is amazing. I love, I love the, how God revealed himself to us in these three distinct beings. And yet, these beings are not separate. They are one. One God. In perfect harmony. Perfect unison. We don't understand that. Because we, like, you know, we're different. And yet God kind of gave us a little bit, a glimpse of that unity through male and female, right? Husband and wife. And that's, uh, uh, that's something that we will talk about sometime later. But we see this three being in one. So I know Holy Spirit in itself is very hard for us to understand, but I want you to understand something. See, God revealed himself in these three distinct natures and three distinct essence or three distinct being for us to really understand who he is. God the Father who created everything, who has a plan from the very beginning to the end, everything is according to his plan, even your life. God has formed you in the womb of your mother and he, right, has given you your life and he has given you, uh, right, the eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ, who came to us and became one of us to save us. And not only that, when he raised back to life, right, and he ascended to heaven, he promised the Holy Spirit, right, who came to dwell in us, live with us, help us, comfort us, to love us. See, this is the kind of understanding we need to have. Yeah, when we see the world, we see beautiful nature, we see the hand of God, God the Father who created all this for us. God who is infinite, He created this amazing world for us. But yet, we disobeyed God and we, you know, we rejected Him, right? When Adam and Eve took the fruit, of the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they chose to live according to their will, not God's will. So we sin against God and we fell from His grace. And yet, God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us, to save us. 
and became the first fruit of the resurrection. So we see, we have this intimate connection with the Son, right? And yet, He couldn't be here, right? All, all places, all at the same time. He was limited in the, you know, in the, the location, what we call space-time, right? In the space and the time constraint, because that's what He did. He emptied Himself to become one of us. And yet, when He went up, back up, He promised, his Holy Spirit, who's been with, you know, God the Father and God the Son from the very beginning. But He's the one who comforts us. He's the one who takes care of us. He's the one who brood over us. He's the one who lives in you right now. He's the one who listens to your prayer. He's the one who prays for you when we don't know what to pray. He's the one who guides us, tucks our heart when we know we have to do the things, right? Fulfill the will of God. So sisters and brothers, I want you to treasure this word. God revealed himself in three beings for us. He didn't have to. He could have been just kind of God Almighty, the one who to be feared. But that's not who he is. He revealed himself as a God Almighty, but at the same time, God incarnate and God the Spirit who guides us and help us. Why did he do that? Because he wanted us to come closer to him, get to know him, to understand this perfect harmony that exists within him. And this is how he has operated from the very beginning. And this is how he comes to us even now. So sisters and brothers, please, as you meditate this word, think about who God is. What he is telling you right now is he is walking with you. He is, you know, helping you. He is guiding you. He is leading you to really to the path of righteousness through his word. The word that the Holy Spirit inspired, right, people to write. This is who he is. The very nature of God, God has revealed for our benefit. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Lord, we thank you for revealing to us who you are, your nature. As a creator, you gave us this life. As savior, you gave us eternal life. And as a comforter, you still give us love and support in every day of our lives. Lord, Thank you. Thank you this for this understanding. But help us, Lord. Help us to know you more. Help us to be closer to you. Help us to recognize your presence in our lives, Lord. We truly thank you for this time of discovery. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
alive Till that stone was moved for good For the Lamb had conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who'd come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born Then the Spirit lit the flame Now this gospel truth of old Shall not kneel, shall not faint But His blood and in This is the time of tithe and offerings. Even though we are not gathering and collecting offering, I would like you to uh, still offer, uh, if you can, uh, digitally, or if you can just save it. And then when we come back and have an in-person worship, that you will make an offering. Offering is a very important part of our worship. So let us pray for the offering. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord. Thank you for your word. Lord, we give our heart to you. And we make this offering to you to show our appreciation of your word. Teach us to trust you always. Thank you for this time. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. These are today's announcements. SKBC's 2021 motto is Restoration 2021. We believe God will restore our spirit in this year as we seek Him with all our hearts and minds. We will continue with our Friday night gathering via Zoom, so FMTP is happening. Please join us and share your life stories. Last week, we had a great Bible study uh, by Brother Connor on uh, Philemon. It was really, really um, insightful. I have finished official visitation of Sky members. However, I'm not done. I still haven't met a lot of you. And I understand because of the situation, we cannot meet face-to-face -face in person. But I would like to either call or, you know, have um, online meetings or anything like that. So please reach out to me if you want to uh, see me and or if you want me to visit you in person or meet you online. Uh, I will also start to call um, as well. Sister Selena is going to a mission trip this month to Uganda. So please pray for and support Sister Selena for this wonderful mission trip. And we will start uh, in-person worship services uh, starting last week of March, Palm Sunday. Uh, please pray for the live in-person worship services. And for that, uh, we will probably have some sort of sign up sheet uh, for uh, in person service. A church is planning a special worship service for Good Friday. So, Sky members will participate in a special video project. So, please follow the instruction from your teachers. Uh, there will, will be like uh, pictures or some short video of um, something that we are kind of thankful for. And I would like to make a kind of montage of uh, all the videos. So, okay, please participate. Let us end with Lord's Prayer. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.